Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. Once again we have some awesome news and leaks for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series but I will say for this one you might want to stay till the very end because we do have some very interesting things to talk about not only for Kenobi but also the Andor series and more. So no more jibber jabber, let's get straight into it. Best Bin Bulletin have confirmed that Benny Safdie who was in the original cast announcement for the show last year is going to be playing the role of the young Jedi survivor Nari. Now now, if you've been following all of the Obi-Wan leaks over the last month or so, then you know who Nari is. Making Star Wars were the ones to first reveal the identity of multiple characters in this show, including the third sister Raver played by Moses Ingram and a young Jedi called Nari. When Entertainment Weekly dropped those first images of the show and the teaser trailer dropped on the same day, we found out that making Star Wars were absolutely right about Raver, and they were also the ones to name drop a young Order 66 survivor called Nari who has been on a 10 year search for Obi-Wan Kenobi. He saw Kenobi's Jedi beacon and the message of hope contained within. And so reportedly, he sets off to Tatooine and eventually finds Obi-Wan during the series. When he finds Kenobi, he's going to ask the former Jedi Master if he wants to rebuild the Order with him. Obi-Wan will decline and tell him to bury his lightsaber in the sand and to get away from there. Obi-Wan knows that Inquisitors are near and putting Luke Skywalker in danger is the worst thing Kenobi can imagine. And so lo and behold, the Inquisitors who've been tracking Nari down find him, interrogate him, shake him down and hang him. They make an example of how brutal these Inquisitors are while this young adult Jedi is now confirmed to be played by Benny Safdie and Bespin Bulletin also revealed some scene details. Their sources told them that Raver, the fifth brother and the Grand Inquisitor are going to shake down multiple civilians trying to lure Nari out, they feel his presence and all three are going to enter an establishment as we see in the trailer and that's when we're going to hear the Grand Inquisitor giving a speech about Jedi not being able to help themselves which we partly heard in the teaser and in this frame, this frame right here, Raver is threatening Nari and Bespin also note that when Obi-Wan is heard in the trailer saying the fight is done, we lost, he is talking directly to Nari. At this early point in the show we must remember that Obi-Wan is broken, hopeless and lost. It's only as the show progresses and later on in the series that he refines the hope. He sees the bigger picture and the remnants of rebellion starting to build. Now Benny Safdie is best known for his directorial work alongside his brother Josh Safdie as the duo the Safdie brothers who are probably most known for their films Uncut Gems starring Adam Sandler and Good Time with Robert Pattinson. Now that is not the only news we have, we have some more character news for the series too. Notably the roles of O'Shea Jackson Jr, Indira Varma and Kamel Nanjiani. All three characters which are very important to the world of Obi-Wan Kenobi might become breakout characters based around the positive buzz for the characters and the actors performances. So let's dive into who these three are playing. They start off with O'Shea Jackson Jr who is going to play a humanitarian of sorts. We have to remember that the rebellion is not really in full force at this stage of the timeline. They say the sparse bits of info about O'Shea Jackson Jr have said he has something to do with the humanitarian effort on the planet of Jabim, which in Legends was a very crucial planet during the Clone Wars. If you've read the Revenge of the Sith novelization or you read the Republic Commando books, then you'll know this planet well. Now when it comes to Indira Varma, we know that she's going to be an Imperial officer called Tia. While details are sparse, they were told that things are not as they seem. Varma is likely on the side of good and not really an Imperial. She could be a spy in the Organa family or some kind of defected Imperial officer, but she's not going to be for the Empire. In Legends, there is actually a Tia Organa who was part of the Organa family and because her character is also Tia, they could bring this character into canon. In Legends, she was the sister of Bale and the adoptive aunt of Leia. And finally, when it comes to Kamel Nanjiani's character, he's going to be a point of contact for Obi-Wan. Some people have been saying he might be playing the droids that we saw in the teaser trailer, the one that people keep mistaking for Captain Rex. By the way, it's not Captain Rex, but he's not going to be playing a droid. He's going to be apparently a Han Solo type of character. A quote, dashing and daring rogue. At first he's going to seem like a bad guy but he's actually going to be very important in this story. A mutual contact of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Bail Organa in the mission to rescue Leia. So those are the details we know so far, there is much more information to come. And with all of these reports, 
they are just outlines, the show itself is going to fill out these characters a lot more, so there is going to be much more substance to them. And so one final thing for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, we now have an official synopsis. Before today, there was a brief paragraph on Disney Plus that read as follows. Obi-Wan Kenobi begins 10 years after the dramatic events of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, where he faced his greatest defeat, the downfall and corruption of his best friend and Jedi apprentice, Anakin Skywalker turned evil Sith Lord, Darth Vader, but that was not the official synopsis. They have now replaced this paragraph with the following. During the reign of the Galactic Empire, former Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi embarks on a crucial mission. Kenobi must confront allies turned enemies and face the wrath of the Empire. Now when they talk about the crucial mission, this is in reference to Princess Leia being taken by the Inquisitors. And presumably, the allies turned enemies refers to the Inquisitors themselves. But who knows, we could be in for a surprise. They could also be talking about someone else. We will just have to wait and see, but this is the official plot synopsis. And so finally, my dear friends, just a quick tidbit on the Andor series. I came across this article from CBR where they talk about the biggest threat that the show could face, which in their opinion is too many cameos. Now, Andor is the show I know the most about. I know two of the people who worked behind the scenes, but having said that, there is a lot I can't say. So when I came across this article, I was curious to know what CBR found out. It turns out, not much. It's just pure speculation. But what I can tell you is there are going to be cameos, but they're not going to take away from the series they're only going to add to it. In the series, we are five years before Rogue One, and this is a very crucial time for the Empire, and what I can say is that Star Wars Rebels heavily influenced the direction of Andor. From what I understand of the Tony Gilroy show is that it's going to aim to provide a better understanding of the gritty underbelly of the Rebellion and the struggles the Rebels endured at this particular point. The fact that it's a spy thriller makes it perfect for the small screen for a streaming series. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I think Andor, of all the upcoming series, is the one that's really going to impress the most. But my point is, you need not worry about big cameos taking away from the show. There are going to be a couple, but they add to it. They contextualize the story and are an essential part of what it aims to tell. As we get nearer to the Andor series, which is rumored to release in August, I'm sure there are going to be tons of character leaks, rumors, reports, and more information. But for now, we're all focused on the Kenobi series. And then from there, I'm sure all of the focus is going to be on Andor and maybe even the Bad Batch season too. Awesome stuff, my dear friends. But with that said, guys, let me know your thoughts of this and everything we spoke about in the comments down below. Did you enjoy this video? And if you did, please be sure to show me some love with a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and a massive welcome if you are. And if you're not a patron, why not consider becoming one? You get tons of videos not found here on YouTube, you get access to our Discord server, and so much more. But until the next one, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have a good one.